I put a vulnerable server on the open internet just to see if it'll get hacked. And spoiler alert, it's gonna get hacked because I'm gonna hack it. And hey, you can too. Look, seriously, here's the IP address, hack the thing, go wild. But you might get blocked from the security that I have in place because for this machine, I've set up CrowdSec. And CrowdSec has already blocked a handful of attacks. Take a look, already stopping over 50 threats across the open internet. Now, let me be straight up, CrowdSec is the sponsor of this video. But seriously, honestly, they have something really cool here. It's awesome and I wanna show you. It's like a whole new idea and approach to cybersecurity. Think of it as like a massively multiplayer online firewall or detections or hey, mitigations blocking threats across the open internet. I'm gonna set it up in this video and if you'd like to follow along, try this experiment yourself, I totally recommend it. Let's dive in. I've gone ahead and just created a cloud virtual machine using Volter. I'm running a Windows Server 2000 2019, and I've gone ahead and installed Crush FTP, the vulnerable rendition that I had a recent video on to exploit this, hey, have some vulnerabilities, and I even went ahead and installed SSH so anyone could brute force this box, try to figure out credentials, and break their way in. And now I'm online at crowdsec.net, and this is it, curated threat intelligence powered by the crowd. There's this really cool sort of idea and rationale behind this, and that, look, there's so many different cybersecurity providers and vendors and even just companies and businesses and organizations spending thousands of dollars, tons of resources, man hours, time, whatever, to try to get cybersecurity right, but we still get hacked. So maybe it's worth a different sort of idea, a different mindset and mentality where we say, look, let's do this thing together. Let's see what threats are out on the horizon and let's pool and aggregate those signals, that intelligence, so that we could fight back and hey, really do the defense correctly as a community. That's the gist, that's the idea. We turn crowd-powered intelligence into actionable block lists to maximize the efficiency of your security operations and reduce cost. I personally have friends that use CrowdSec and really believe in the mission, and I can see why, I do too. They are awesome at making this thing cross-platform, available for just about anything in the whole ecosystem. So we can get started super duper easy just by clicking the login button to get into the CrowdSec console. That is where you'll start your journey with CrowdSec. You can sign up and create an account, but I'll log into one that I do already have created. And look at all these options for installing a security engine. CrowdSec runs on just about everything, but let's dig into Windows. We can grab an MSI installer off of their GitHub releases page, double click to run that, and get CrowdSec installed. Now let's hop back to the documentation. We could, if we wanted to, install a remediation component because they say the security engine that we've just installed by itself is only a detection engine. It will not block anything. But if you want that, you'll need to install the remediation component. Setting that up is just as easy. Once again, we can grab the MSI installer, cruise through it, and we're good. Now, back on the CrowdSec console, next we'll need to enroll that endpoint, that machine, into CrowdSec's environment and network here. Super easy, we'll just copy and paste this, sudo, likely meaning on Linux, but I think this is the command all that we need. And let's get back to our public cloud instance. Let me open up a new instance of PowerShell because hey, that command could now be added to our path. And let's CSCLI for the CrowdSec command line interface, console, enroll, and the unique identifier. Let me hit enter on that and check it out. Watcher successfully enrolled. Now we can get back to the console and keep us moving. Oh, there it is, already, security engines Enroll request, you have a new security engine pending request. If you're the originator and have sufficient permissions, validate to start discovering your security engine. Let me go ahead and accept and enroll. And there we go. Security engine enrollments request has been accepted. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, <laughs> there he is. Look at him. Oh, a little cutesy. Now I gotta say, we're kind of done. Like that's all we needed to do for CrowdSec. Now we can just let it do its magic. Now, obviously, if you were doing this for real, you'd install that security engine on all of your different endpoints and have them all enrolled, or as many as you'd like, into that CrowdSec network. And you can opt into sharing the telemetry, offering the insight, but you'd have that option to make sure the protection is available from the whole crowd community. Since I've just enrolled this, there are no alerts, there are no remediation components or block lists set up in stage, but there are some scenarios. So we could start to drill down and dig into those. And these are kind of neat. 
Like, hey, Windows BF, if you want to click for details on that, it'll detect Windows Auth Brute Force. And we could explore that if we wanted to, we can expand that out. They show you a little bit more of the code behind the scenes, some YAML configuration, but I'm sure you noticed, hey, this is from CrowdSec themselves. If you wanted to go take a look at some others, look, we can just go into the hub and see what anyone else might offer. Look, AdGuard Home Support, Mavis, Apache. This is just the letter A. <laughs> We're alphabetical right now. Okay, yeah, tons of results. And we can take a look at some of the remediation components. There are a lot of these, again, submitted by the community. A lot of bouncers, a lot of, hey, deny lists for some block lists, things that we might have for any other service, any application, any technology stack that you might have present there. And while we're talking about block lists, hey, let me drill down into this for a little bit because this is really awesome. Hey, you could subscribe to however many block lists that you'd like for your CrowdSec security engine and hey, tie them to anything. It shows you however many folks are subscribed to it for a lot of different options and everything that you might like for botnets, for proxies or VPNs or compromised WordPress sites or maybe, oh, cybercrime endpoints. OTX resources, free proxies, there are tons and tons and tons of these. Can I subscribe to like all of them? Let me click this. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. A little bit more detail, proxy VPN list here, and it shows you all oh, the last two days of changes, like however much they're adding or removing, making differences. Oh, that's very slick. Top behaviors for SSH brute force, totally want that one. Let's add our security engine to that. And yep, that's the only one that we've got here in action. Let's go ahead and confirm subscription. Select remediation, yeah, we could ban them. It'll ban all of the IPs referenced in the block list. This remediation will apply to all the security engines selected. It'll be effective in about two hours since the community block list pull. Let's do it. Easy. Oh, and there we go. Now it shows that and we could just keep adding more if we wanted to. <laughs> and hey, we do get to see the value of these block lists and these security mechanisms in action. Over time, I did get malicious actors trying to hammer and beat up the box. I'll tell you more about it in just a sec. And I think that is a fine segue because while we're chatting about these bad nefarious IP addresses that might be scanning or rolling out attacks, exploits across the open internet, one of the other awesome and incredible resources that CrowdSec offers is their threat intelligence page where you could literally just explore any IP address. We could explore the threat intelligence platform and get a full report of IP addresses. And this does have a ton of integrations in case there's anything else that you wanted to pour this into as part of your own technology technology stack already, whether it's Maltigo, MISP, OpenCTI, I like to see Splunk in here, the hive and everything. But look at this, API integration, hundreds and millions of malicious IP addresses in their database. And even if you just scroll down, you can see some of the most aggressive IPs like added minutes ago. <laughs> All right, so it's been a little bit since I've set up and installed CrowdSec, and now we've gotten some real hits, genuine alerts from malicious threat actors and adversaries trying to hammer, beat up, and exploit our server. So I'd like to show you, because some of the insight and visibility that CrowdSec gives us is really cool. So I'm back over in the CrowdSec console, and take a look. This security engine that we installed just about two weeks ago, we set up all those block lists, and now we've got 53 alerts. So let me click into this and see what's up. This is pretty cool. It's the visualizer of all those threats, all those hits, alerts coming from, hey, those rogue malicious IP addresses trying to beat up our server. We've got a visualizer of, hey, what different IP addresses might have been doing what, where, when, and how. You can scroll down on this and see some of the scenarios, what might have triggered. In this case, it was that Windows brute force for SSH that we had open or RDP. And of course, you've got the actual timestamp, hey, when that attack took place, and the source IP address. What malicious actor, where were they coming from across the open internet, and then what host was actually affected here. All of these are for our same security engine, but of course if you had multiple installed, you'd see that all across CrowdSec. One of the really cool things, by the way, if you were to adjust the columns at the top here, you can even add a context column. And for things like SSH brute force, that can even tell you what users were targeted and what you might need to, hey, lock down doors a little bit more for your own security. But look at this, these are attacks from yesterday Day, seemingly ongoing just about every day. And look, that's a whole nother page. I haven't gone through, look, all 53 of them here. It's pretty cool to scroll through the summary, but you do have a little bit more insight if you were to toggle this to the expanded view. And this gives you even more detail, some sweet graphs to say, look, these are the source IP addresses that we saw beating up your machine, trying to gain access, how many times they hit, when, and all the details. Source IP is up at the top here, but you could dig into the AS, even drill down to source country, 
Aussies. Looks like Russia is trying to beat me up about 16 times. They, they take the number one spot, I guess. India, Philippines, Pakistan. Look, it's the wild, wild west, worldwide web. I'm digging these graphs. That gives a heck of a lot of sweet visibility. And again, if you have multiple agents and security engines set up and installed, then you've got that visibility. Look, show more on everything across your entire network. And what the video kind of start here was just like five minutes to set that up. Genuinely, CrowdSec is set and forget. And that's kind of the coolest thing. And we even just had this set up as a small, simple showcase with Windows Brute Force. When you've got other ports, other services open on your instance, look, that's going to be a target and some attack surface. You got to be tracking what threats are out there. With that said, look, I think a lot of the cool value comes from digging into the source IP addresses. Because again, look, we're seeing some of these malicious actors beaten up more often than not. This Russia IP address, 87251.67.146, look, it's been seen for like two years now, but still cruising. Known for brute force, tons of MITRE techniques in the mix, it is a noisy individual, even tagged as a very aggressive actor. And we've seen a little bit of this before, just as we were exploring that CrowdSec threat intelligence, we see the heat map, their activity, what they're up to, but Take a look at this. You can see those top targeted countries, the attack details, but because now we've seen it for our security engine, our installed CrowdSec instance, look, we can see the frequency and it's odd. It's like every other day there's another attempt. If we wanted to, we could write some comments for our own internal organization that says, hey, repeat actor. Obviously, these are all internal to your organization. They will not be shared out and about. But if you wanted to contribute to the whole community, right, that is where you can say, look, I own this IP address, false positive bad actor, as we've seen. Now, note, that's just one of the 53 alerts that we've gotten in genuinely just that short amount of time. We could drill down into any of these IP addresses, or we could go take a look at the options menu. If we wanted to explore that in CTI, just as we did, or if we want to filter on that, we can see all of the different attempts clicking in on things. Some of the other options, if we were exploring those IP addresses, of course, again, filter, you could exclude if you'd like. But if we were to copy the IP address, we could bring that all the way back up to the top because we could do some of the other interesting things that CrowdSec lets us do. Look, we could drill down into our security engines, but ultimately something I haven't got a chance to dive into yet are the decisions that you could actually implement. So far, I haven't set any up, but now that we have these hits, these alerts, we could add a new decision for or whatever IP address that might be in question. And we could say, look, we'll do whatever we want and ban it, custom, captcha, or set a specific duration. Oh, and a quick note here, all these decisions last four hours. So all of the alerted IP addresses would have had a decision next to them. But since more time has passed since I recorded this segment, they aren't shown right now. The decisions tab does still show all the active decisions taken against IP addresses. This is pretty similar to what we were doing with the block list in the first place, but again, we could add whatever notes we wanted to for our own team. At the very least, this gives us some more flexibility and fine-grained decision-making for a specific IP or IP address range. Let me say, oh, four-hour duration, say, Shady Hacker. Granted, again, we have already set that up with the block list, but wanted to showcase how decisions can come to life when you are creating these. And look, in case you're curious how these threat actors, adversaries, malicious actors are beaten up, brute forcing, and hammering the services, look, this doesn't have to be hard. I'll put my hacker hat on, I'll act as the adversary for a second. I'm inside of Kali Linux, and let me just run like Hydra, or honestly like Nmap. Any of the command line tools that make it pretty easy to brute force whatever ports, maybe run some aggressive attack scripts, Hydra's a worthwhile option here. We can specify a username with TAC L. I'll use just local administrator because it is a Windows box. Supply a password file. We'll use the regular classic rocku.txt word list. And let's do this on the SSH port for that host. Let me put this in verbose mode. We can ignore anything that's there and force things. So fingers crossed, we'll see it just trying to hammer beat up all the potential username and password combinations with those word lists over and over and over again. And now CrowdSec may very well just block me or you or anyone else, any other IP address actor on the open internet that might be beaten up, brute forcing, trying to exploit and hack into that server. And I know we've just done a super simple showcase with Windows brute force, but seriously, think about all of the open ports or services, hey, the attack surface for your own environment, 
and what CrowdSec already has readily available with crowdsourced intelligence and their own remediation capability, I have just scratched the surface of all the sweet value that comes from CrowdSec. It really is like massively multiplayer online cybersecurity, and that's a pretty cool idea. With that, hey, there is a link in the video description if you'd like to kick the tires, try this thing out yourself, and see it in action. It's open source, you've got awesome documentation, you can get curated threat intelligence powered by the crowd with CrowdSec. With that, thanks so much to CrowdSec for sponsoring this video, and thank you for tuning in, watching, and doing all those YouTube algorithm things. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.